from the political campaign trail two days before the election to pack RFK Stadium for a huge NFC matchup between the defending Super Bowl champions, the Washington Redskins and the New York Giants. The NFC East is recognized as the NFL's best, and the division has produced four of the last six Super Bowl champs. And today, the Cowboys held on to first place with a 20 to 10 win over Philadelphia. So the Redskins need a win to stay within striking distance of the division-leading Cowboys. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. Joe Gibbs historically has not played the Giants well. In fact, they'd lost six in a row until they swept the series last year. In fact, he comes in here tonight. He's amazed he's a 10-point favorite. He thinks he's being set up for a loss. He's so concerned because he feels he doesn't match up very well physically with the Giants, and he feels the Giants are going to play their best game of this 92 season. And Pat Hayden, thus far, Joe Gibbs has been bailed out by the defense while he waits for this offense to get into sync. They've given up only nine points in the last three games, eight touchdowns all year long. Well, you know, this defense has not played just well this year. They have played sens sensationally. Now, remember, this Redskin team is not the same Redskin team of a year ago that won a Super Bowl. They were 7-0 and at this point a year ago, and they were healthy. Now they're 5-2 and with a lot of injuries. The one constant has been the defense, and they've played remarkably well together. Richie Pettibon has 16 or 17, 18 guys combining. You see 22 sacks by 11 different players, 11 interceptions by six players and that's the thing they have everybody contributing on defense Gary and this is a defense that does not make many mistakes and they don't give you any easy touchdowns Wilbur Marshall after seven weeks may be the MVP in the NFL he's been dominating at outside linebacker it seems kind of funny Giants and Redskins and talking about linebackers you think you want to lead with Lawrence Taylor but Wilbur Marshall is the lead story tonight for the Washington Redskins this is a guy that has done virtually everything for the Redskins this year sacking Randall Cunningham just a few weeks ago intercepting a pass against Denver and then running it in for the score he has been around the ball virtually all season long last week against the Vikings again causing havoc in the backfield not only the sack on Gannon he causes the fumble in a very tight ball game that leads to Washington winning. And that's the thing. When Wilbur Marshall gets around the ball, usually good things happen for the Redskins. So many years of defense for the Giants carry the organization, but it's aging. Lawrence Taylor set such a high standard that at age 33, it's really hard to live up to that. Well, you know, for over a decade, Lawrence Taylor has been an icon, really defined what a linebacker is and how he should play the game. But self-admittedly, he is not the player that he once was. And even just a few years ago, he used to run around three years ago. This is the play a game that he we did ran across the field to make a tackle I mean he could play at a very high pitch and emotional level one of the great pass rushers of really of the National Football League history offensive tackles couldn't handle him backs couldn't handle him but it has changed a little bit this year he is no longer the dominant bull rusher and some of the frustration is beginning to show but I think Gary too what he still can do is rush the passer and a fundamental flaw of this giant system has him dropping back in pass coverage and i can tell you quarterbacks still fear him, fear him as a pass rusher not in coverage ray hanley is under siege in new york for the media the fans and some of his players he's literally in the eye of the storm and he knows for anything good to happen this year they've got to be washington well ray hanley last night talked about a, his team having a fragile confidence and you worry about ray hanley's confidence as well because he has been besieged he's had problems with players and friends but he thinks he matches up well and can win this football game tonight the Giants won the toss they will be kicking off and this will be Joey Smith out of Louisville bringing it out across the 20 to the 21 yard line Jeff Hotzler the quarterback his fourth start of the year Sims hurt had elbow surgery he's 0-1 career against the skins last week attempted just nine passes but had a seven yard touchdown run and pass in the win over the seattle seahawks and we have movement Brad stokes a collision with jumbo elliott this is a 119th meeting between these two NFC East rivals, and Howard Rowe is our referee. Prior to the snap, we got a false start on number 76 offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. 
Offensively, this is a big line. We just mentioned Elliott, Roberts, Oates, Moore, Riesenberg, and Howard Cross, a very good blocking tight end. Rodney Hampton with Jared Bunch, who has emerged this year at fullback. Ingram and Baker, the wideouts. Hosteller, this first pass at Temple, a first and 15. Being flushed out. They don't want him running that much as he gets it off to Howard Cross, who makes a diving catch at the 25. They say that Howard Cross did not make the grab. He was out of bounds. The reason they want Hosteller running so much is they're one hit away from having to play a rookie quarterback. Here he is. Well, the thing about Jeff Hosteller, he has been very, he's been very good on the move this year. And you, but you have to, you have to con be concerned about the way he plays. I mean, he plays quarterback in a, in a kind of a rough fashion. He took a tremendous shot last week against Seattle. And as you, you mentioned, they cannot win the game tonight without Jeff Austin. Second down and 15. Rodney Hampton spins to the 30. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Rodney Hampton coming into this football game fourth in the NFC in rushing. Defensively, the Redskins have been very, very good. Man, Williams, Tim Johnson, and Stokes. Marshall, we talked about him. Govea might now be the hottest middle linebacker in the NFL. Collins coming back from a back problem of a week ago. Mayhew, Johnson, Copeland, and Edwards in the secondary. Three plan B pickups starting in the secondary. Third in the yard. Hampton trying to get the first down, and I don't think he got it. Fred Stokes was there. The Giants like the matchup tonight. Jumbo Elliott on Fred Stokes. They think they can run the ball to their left. But that time, Fred Stokes makes the play number 60. Here's the surge. Uh, the surge. Cratch number 61 comes around, buries his guy. But it was Stokes number 60 who made the play. Always been known as a pass rusher, Stokes, but he has emerged as a run stopper this year for the Skins. John Landetta to punt the football. on the return and Mitchell takes the tackle at the 30 to the 32 yard line Mark Rippon who has suffered nine interceptions this year however six of those coming in two games will come out to run this team last week Joe Gibbs felt that he had one of the gutsiest performances he's ever had by a quarterback he took a real beating showing some toughness 38 and 15 as a starter second only to Joe Montana among starting quarterbacks. Oh. And we have an end around fake to Art Monk ripping up the field and wide open. The catch is made by Gary Clark for the first down. 21 yard completion. You know, the one characteristic being missed by the Redskins this year from a year ago was a big play in the passing department early in the football game. They come out on the first play and get a relatively big play. You know, you look at the difference between the Redskins this year and a year ago, no big plays in the passing game early in the game, and they haven't connected inside the 20. First down at the 47 of New York. Rippon on first down to throw. Clark not able to hang on at the 35-yard line. Second down, 10 from the 47 for Rippon. We talked at the, at the beginning that Lawrence Taylor still can rush the passer. And I want to tell you, quarterbacks fear him as a pass rusher. Offensive tackles do, but nobody fears Lawrence Taylor in pass coverage. And Joe Gibbs fears he will not retire. Yeah, but, but that's just it. He, he may not, but if you're going to utilize his remaining skills, you've got him, ha you must have him rushing the pass. Second down, 10. They bring the tight end over to go against LT. Ernest Biner with his first carry to the 41 yard line. It's a patched up offensive line for the Redskins. Only one guy, Mark Slareth, is there as the original man at the beginning of the season. 
Elowen Eby replacing the All-Pro. Lachey, McKenzie going for Jeff Bostic. Biner, Sanders, Clark, and Monk. Of course, Sanders, Clark, and Monk, the posse. Third down and five for Washington. Clark in motion. Rippon with time, and he throws it into the ground, and that'll bring up fourth down. Ricky Sanders, the intended receiver, at the 30-yard line. Rippon has not really been in sync yet in the estimation of Joe Gibbs. Well, we talked about what Lawrence Taylor can still do is get your attention as a pass rusher. Now, just he gets a, little, he gets a hold there by the left tackle, but you can see the Redskins right now, at least on that play, are just blocking him with one man. It used to be a tackle and a tight end. And if that's going to happen, Lawrence Taylor can still be a factor tonight. Dave Maggett to receive the punt from Kelly Goodburn. He has eight inside the 20 prior to this one, but he got too much of it. It'll be in for the touchback and bring it out to the 20-yard line, a 41-yard punt. That's a bad punt. You got to punt the ball out of bounds inside the 10. No score from our nation's capital, 11-28 in the first quarter. This has been a team that doesn't look like they're having a lot of fun. They're not playing with a lot of passion. You need some of that on a team. What was he saying? All our rookies, they don't treat them right. Yeah. Make it too easy for them. they got to go through some of the harassment. Giants with the ball for the second time. Rodney Hampton's got the corner and then takes the hit at the 25, makes it to the 26, a gain of six. Gary, I think for the Giants to win this football game, at least two things have to happen. One of them, Dave Maggett, must get in the ball game on first and second down and be a factor. He can't just be a third down player for the Giants anymore. He's one of the few guys who can go the distance. And secondly, Lawrence Taylor, they have to let him rush the passer. If they do those two things, they have a chance. Well, that's part of their game plan is to use Megat on first and second. Second and four. Ingram in motion. Hostetler with time, dumps it off to Hampton. Hampton with his 21st catch of the year is going to be just short of the first down. Andre Collins, who was hurt early last week against Minnesota. The back injury over to make the stop. There was some question whether he'd be ready to go. He's got a bulging disc in his back, and it's pinching a nerve, but he's been ready to go. And we talked about the Redskins defense at the beginning of this broadcast, Gary, and they make big plays, but a lot of little plays in between those big plays. And, and that was just one of them there, one of the little plays by Andre Collins. Third down and less than a yard to go. And Bunch gets it easily. 250 pounders, second year man out of Michigan. He has emerged. He's averaging 5.8 a carry, which leads the NFL. Yeah, he's got some grass on his helmet. It's like, it's like playing at Soldier Field. Left side of the offensive line, the, the left tackle there was William Roberts, who's ordinarily the left guard, number 66. Watch how he just kind of collapses the inside. He gets uh, 55 Andre Collins hooked and locked, blocked inside, and that's an easy first down run for Bunch. Megan has come in on first down. Flag on the play is Hostetler. Far side to Howard Cross, and Cross will take it across the 45 to the 47. I think John Elliott may have moved again. That would be the second penalty on number 76. Prior to the snap, 76 ball start on offense. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. That, that's okay. Jumbo Elliott is one of the guys that Ray Hanley feels can help him win this football game. And Ray Hanley was saying last night there are a few matchups in our offensive line that we must win. One of them is Jumbo Elliott on Fred Stokes, and the other is William Roberts on Tim Johnson. That's the matchups that really concern Gibbs. They're so big up front. On a first and 15. Not anything developing there. Maybe a yard, and that's all. 
Tim Johnson has played so well at that defensive tackle spot plugging up the middle. Johnson a former Pittsburgh Cedar tutored by mean Joe Green before he was traded to the Washington Redskins gain of yard and that's all second down. The remarkable thing about the Redskins is their organization seems to see things in people that others don't. They have three plan B's in the secondary. They've traded for both of their tackles and another plan B up front. Yeah, when guys get to the Redskins, they just seem to be a lot more productive. On a second and 14, Hostetler in trouble. Gets out of there and tries to get it off to Rodney Hampton. Incomplete. It'll bring up a third down. And Wilbur Marshall plays like a bullet. I mean, there is no hesitation in Wilbur Marshall. He may be wrong sometimes, and he may get held sometimes, oh. like he did there, the Oheimlich maneuver on him. <laughs> but, you know, he, he is not indecisive. And because of that, he disrupts rhythm, and that's what defense is all about, disrupting rhythm. So Megat will come in on a third and 14. Somehow the Giants have got to get Megat to be a factor on this football team. We'll see a lot of him tonight. Hostetler completes it to Megat. Open field move. This dynamic little package gets it out to the 39. It'll be considerably short of the first down and bring up fourth down as Danny Copeland and Brad Edwards converge for the stop. Boy, one of the Redskins came flying over the top. I mean, this is a Redskin defense that is, you know, you got 11 guys running to Dave Maggot after he catches the ball. Now, Maggot, the, the key, the hallmark of Maggot is his acceleration after a catch. Now, he had to adjust here so he didn't get started quick enough. Otherwise, maybe something good happens. Because a white jersey's come flying over the top. Four or five white jerseys around the ball carrier. And out of the punt to Brian Mitchell. Misty. Camp Knight. And Mitchell let it hit at the last moment. And it'll go to the 10-yard line. I don't know if he lost that ball or what. He hit wasn't it in the sun. <laughs> in the sun is right. We haven't seen that in three days. 52-yard punt. And the Redskins will start from the 10-yard line. What's characterized this Redskin defense is hustling to the ball this year. Watch Copeland. You can't really see Wilbur Marshall. He's coming in from the outside, but they're on the pass rush. You know, if you stop it right there, here's Marshall, here's Copeland. And the ball is going to end up there, and both those guys end up in the play. And you never give up when you're on defense, and Copeland and Marshall, they go in to help on the tackle. That's good hustling defense. From the 10, the Redskins start to drive. Having a little footing problem as he comes across the 10 to the 12. The Giants defensively, they are aging. They're averaging over 29 years of age. Dorsey, Howard, and Marshall up front. He had arthroscopic surgery September 15th. Banks coming back from a hip flexor injury of a week ago. Johnson, Diossi, and LT. Collins, they don't feel he gets the credit he deserves. Williams, McGriggs, and Jackson complete the secondary. Second and eight. Middleton goes in motion. Biner getting close to the 20, or should say the 15-yard line, and knocked down there. Biner coming in here, sixth in the NFC, and Joe Gibbs feels that he is one of the most prepared players he's ever had. He gets himself ready, and he said he'll knock your face off. Well, he's one of the toughest players as well, and I, and I think one of your running back is one of your toughest players. Your offensive linemen block harder for him because they respect him. Third down and six for Washington. Ricky Sanders goes in motion. Griffin spreading away from the trouble for Marshall. Up the field. Art Monk can't get it. But should have had it. Rippon did a good job of getting out of that pressure situation. And as you mentioned, the ball was well enough thrown to be caught. 
So yeah, Mark Rippon is a big guy, 235 pounds, but he moves pretty well for a big guy. And every once in a while, the Redskins will do that. They used to do it with Theismann, and they're still doing it with Mark Rippon. They'll get him outside of the rush and away from Lawrence Taylor and get the ball downfield. Just a change of pace. Good for a yard deep in the end zone to punt it away to make it. High snap. And not a good punt. It's going to take a redskin bounce and Megat is able to come up with it at the 47 39 yard punt by Goodburn that looks like a little play by Dave Megat but that's a nice stop because if he doesn't stop it it goes another 10 yards no scourge just outside six minutes to go in the first quarter RFK Stadium Gary Bender Pat Hayden 604 to go in this first quarter no score after 39 yard punt the Giants have the football at their own 47 Stetler broken up nicely that time. Mayhew, Martin Mayhew against Stephen Baker. You know, the Giants have not been a fast starting ball club. You figure if they can hang in here early in this first quarter, as you look at those graphics, being on the road, that could give them some of that confidence. They have such fragile confidence coming into the game. Well, that's what Ray Hanley was saying. We need a win over a team like the Redskins. Yeah, they beat Seattle last week, but they felt they should have beaten Seattle. A win over the Redskins gets them right back in the hunt and feeling good about themselves, and they don't right now. Second and 10 for Hostetler. Rodney Hampton. And he is dragging Andre Collins with him. Didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And Collins, who has started every game since coming over from Penn State in 1990, was there to hang on. Collins, number 55, right there in the middle of your screen. Now, this is how you take on a lead blocker. You give him your inside shoulder, you don't let him hook you inside, and you wait for your help to get there. I mean, we've talked about Wilbur Marshall. Well, when you think about Kurt Gavea and Andre Collins, all three of the Redskins linebackers have played remarkably well this year. Third down, still virtually 10 to go. And it's raining pretty good right now. Hostetler, the power collapsing, and he gets clothesline by Jumpy Gathers. Oh. <laughs> That hurt all the way up here. Six-yard loss on the play. Th that is a nightmare for a quarterback. I mean, that kind of play. And remember, the Giants are one play away. Take a look at Roberts here on Gathers. Giants are one play away from having a rookie at quarterback with Phil Simms hurt. I mean, Jimmy Gathers just pushes Roberts back. And Roberts is a big man and one of their best offensive linemen. They say that Gathers is their strongest player. I believe him. Landetta to punt to Brian Mitchell. Mitchell going to return it. Up to the 30. 35 breaks the tackle to 40. He may go. Renee Thompson giving chase. It's over. It's a touchdown for Mitchell. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a guy having some fun. who returned two last year the only player in the NFL has a third of his career you know the Redskins last year won the Super Bowl and to win the Super Bowl you have to win it by being a balanced team capable of winning it in all three areas offense defense and special teams this year Joe Gibbs's team can, has won it on defense they've won games on special teams like last week they have yet to win a game on offense. 84 yards as Chip Lowmiller adds a point after. It was a 42-yard punt and an 84-yard return. And he got some good blocks. And every big punt return I have seen this year in the NFL has gone right up the middle. You make the last guy miss, and then you dive into the end zone and celebrate with your fans and teammates. I'll give him a three on the dive. And the Russian judge, 1.2. Take a look at Brian Mitchell's eyes right there. This is a guy who sets up this punt return. I mean, some of it's blocking, but he has an exact a feel for what happens. 
We'll come back to that as we're going to have a return now by Dave Megan. Megan will bring it across the 25, and he comes out with a very good effort to the 34. All right, Pat, take us back to the 84-yard return. Well, thank you, Gary, very much. Appreciate the intro. But it's the eyes. It's, he sets it up first, picks up a couple of uh, blocks, but he knew exactly where the blocks were going to come from. And Jerry, the last guy you have to beat, you don't block the punter. You say, hey, punt returner, you fake the, punt re the uh, punter out. And that's what Brian Mitchell did. And here's some excitement. Well, Landette is not going to be tackling a lot during the course of the season. Well, you hope not. <laughs> I mean, if he's your leading tackler, you got some problems. Jared Bunch, and Bunch is going to be stacked up. That return by Mitchell, by the way, is the third longest in Redskin history. That was Tim Johnson that straightened up Bunch. Now, Pat, with a fragile confidence, the team that has not had a lot of good things happen to him. You're on the road. Remember last week? Mm -hmm. Rod Woodson returned 180 yards against the Chiefs, and yeah. the Chiefs never did get that game back in hand. Well, here's where I think the Giants have a, a little bit of a deficiency, and, and the biggest difference between these two teams is at wide receiver. The Giants don't have a guy you can throw the ball to at 10 yards, and he can go 80 yards with, like the Redskins do. And that's the difference. And when you're struggling right now, you want to have a quarterback throw a 10-yard pass and a receiver turn it into 50. Second and nine for the Giants. Ingram in motion. Complete to cross. He's got a first down at the 50. He'll take it to the 40, and Wilbur Marshall's got him. Hostetler is down. Hostetler is hurt back at the 15. And as we mentioned, they are one hit away of having to play a rookie. He is a tough guy. If he is hurt, it must have been a pretty good shot. I promise you. And it was Kurt Gavea, the middle linebacker on the blitz, who got him right in the ribs. You're right, though. Hostetler is tough. He's walking it off. Kent Man. Graham, a rookie out of Ohio State, would be the guy to go. He's thrown four passes this year. He had to fill in for Hostetler against the Rams. Has to be a run here. Hitler, three of six for 39 passing gives to Hampton and Hampton maybe got a yard Fred Stokes was there again Gary here's where your offensive line has to help your quarterback if you know your quarterback is hurt and struggling and trying to get his breath back you have to open up some holes run for a couple of first downs and let him feel a little bit better than he was just a few moments ago nowhere holes nowhere to go there as Fred Stokes early in this game he has won the matchup between John Elliott, and that's one the Giants felt they were going to win. The Giants have been running the ball well. They're third in the NFL coming in here. Second and nine. Hostetler looking off the coverage, going deep to Ingram, and he and Johnson bouncing off of each other. A.J. Johnson inside the five. No flag, and it'll bring up a third down. When you think about how well this Redskin defense plays as you watched A.J. Johnson there. I mean, remember, Daryl Green is still not available. But good coverage there. Watch the, the throw here by Jeff Hostin. The ball's wobbling. It's tough to get a grip on the ball in wet weather. Maybe his hand got, got hit by a helmet. You just don't know. But, again, perfect coverage by A.J. Johnson. Third down and nine. comes in motion. Hostetler being flushed out. He's going to run. And Hostetler's got the first down to the 20. The 15, the 10, first and goal of the 8. 27-yard run, and that shows you the courage, the guts of number 15, who was hurt earlier on this drive. You're right, but Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator, said yesterday, we need to get, you see Bardo say, come on up. The ball is slippery. I can't get it back there all the way to you. But Fossil said, hey, when Hostetter runs in this game, we want him going feet first. We have a rookie, two rookies, backing him up. But I tell you, this is the kind of play, though, when your team is struggling, you talk about fragile confidence, Gary. I hope offensive linemen appreciate this. I think they do. First and goal at the eight. Bunch straight ahead to the five. Bunch breaks a tackle. Touchdown, New York. He 
just ran over Martin Mayhew. And you can see why he wears out safeties and cornerbacks when he carries the ball. Yeah, that was a remarkable run by Bunch, but that is a heck of a drive led by Jeff Hostin. And there's Richie Pettipon, the defensive coordinator, but and you have to you have to say, hey, Jeff Hostetter, they said we want Jeff Hostetter to, to beat us, force him to beat us. And in that drive, he was largely responsible for, for Bunch being able to score. That big 27-yard scramble. Matt Barr to attempt the point after. And we're even at seven. 122 left in the first quarter. And the Giants have come back. Jared Bunch has been one of the biggest surprises of this team, this giant team. They have run the ball, and you cannot take him low because he's going to run through arm tackles. And then he may give you a little extracurricular in the end zone afterwards. But he picks a hole for a big guy. I mean, he's 250 pounds, and he'll run over little defensive backs like Martin Mayhew and then run through linebackers as well. He really had a wasted rookie year. He only carried the ball one time, had two catches in the passing game, but now that he's emerged, they go to that two-back offense with he and Hampton, and that's two big, strong, promising running backs. Seven all, and I think your point about Hostetler will come back as a thread to this game. That scramble may have provided them a chance to still stay in this one. This had the chance of getting away from them. You know, just ha Jeff Hostetler in that 1990 championship year played well in all the big games. You, you can see he is still hurting. But he has been not, he has not been able to stay healthy. It's been, you know, musical quarterbacks between him and, and uh, Phil Sims really since Ray Hanley's been there. Barr will kick off. Desmond Howard and Brian Mitchell back for the Redskins. Mitchell's going to let it go out through the end zone for the touchback, and they'll bring it to the 20-yard line. Let's go back to Bunch's eight-yard run. Yeah, take a look at the right side here. Here is Moore. Here's Reisenberg. How, watch how they block their guys. They fake this way, and Bunch just slips right in here. And every now and then you say, okay, uh, my fullback Bunch, you're 250 pounds. We can't block them all. We're going to leave the corner for you to block. And he just runs through the tackle of Martin Mayhew for the score. Well-designed play by the Giants. Hostetler obviously in pain. Jeff, of course, took him to the Super Bowl in 90 when Sims went down. At the start of the year, he thought he would be the number one quarterback. And on August 22nd, he sustained a back injury, and Sims started the first four. Ricky Irvins has come into the backfield. And Ricky will get it. And the USC Trojan brings it out close to the 24-yard line. These two old rivals have met so many times. It's been a tough series for Joe Gibbs. He's had less success against New York than any other team. Losing six in a row until last year sweeping the series. Second down, six yards to go. Urban's again, and Urban squirms forward a yard short of the first down as we're coming to the end of this first quarter of play. Ricky Urban's, in the estimation of Joe Gibbs, is the most explosive running back he's ever been around. You know, Ricky Ir Urban's can break some tackles. I mean, what, what they have said about him is he really hasn't gotten going this year like he did at the second half of last season. They're waiting for him to break out because he was a pass receiver, a runner, a special teams player. He really hasn't done it yet this season. Third and a yard. Irvin's trying to get the first down, and he's got it, and then some. As we come to the end of the first quarter, the Redskins will have it at their 37-yard line. Seven all the score, a punt return by Washington, and an eight-yard run by fullback Bunch. An insightful look in an interview with Kevin Kiley and Lawrence Taylor and Ernie Johnson back in our studios in Atlanta. We'll have highlights from that big Dallas-Philadelphia game today. Back to you guys in your dry booth. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you can come up here anytime. <laughs> Just join us for a while. We'll get you down there in time for the halftime. First quarter, seven all. We start the second as the Redskins with a first down. You can see numbers wise, Giants have had time of possession and also the better numbers, but that big punt return 
has been while the skins have gotten on the board as Irvins tries to go forward and Lamar McGriggs was there first number 38 McGriggs was one of those guys that stayed around New Jersey and bulked up this year. Well, and look what they did here at the last time. They, they, they changed from the, the to the three-quarter inch, the big one. They, they take they get the rotor rooter out there to take the cleats off. They get rid of the half-inch cleats, and they do this in 30 minutes or less. They get it done for 15 bucks. Full oil change and uh, the whole bit, the whole lube job. Second and nine. It makes you taller, too, doesn't it? <laughs> Hand off to Ricky Irvins, and he got maybe a yard. That time, it's Carl Banks. But you know, this is the kind of game you need everything like that. Three-quarter inch cleats. I mean, it, it finally seems like football season to me, Gary. You know, baseball season is finally over. There's a bunch of good games today. You have an NFC East team here tonight. You're playing in some rain. It, it really does seem like football season. A Southern California guy, what do you know about weather? Well, I've got my long coat on, yeah. It rained there a couple years ago, about seven years ago. <laughs> Third down and virtually no game in the last play. Third and nine. in motion. Rippon with good protection. Coming back to make the catch and rolling up with a grab across the 45-yard line is Ricky Sanders. And let's see where they mark it. Did he get the first down? Looks like he's a yard short. Okay, hit. Now, earlier in the game, they had a tackle on Lawrence Taylor. Now they have a tackle and a linebacker. Middleton, number 87. Elowan Eby also. I mean, so the, Joe Gibbs said yesterday, I don't believe this stuff about the demise of Lawrence Taylor. We still believe we have to prepare by starting to block Lawrence Taylor on passing downs. Fourth down and a yard to go. Goodburn to punt to Megan. <laughs> Megan is going to call for the fair catch. She makes it at the 15-yard line. 38-yard punt. Giants will have it. We have 12.57 to go in this first half of play from RFK. Seven all in the second quarter. It's time for tonight's GMC truck leaderboard. And coming into this week, Emmett Smith ranks second in the NFC rushing wise. Now today he had 163 yards. Foster had 118 and Walker 44. I should say Smith was second in the NFL. Big win today for the Dallas Cowboys. Play action fake by Hostetler. Derrick Brown, their top draft pick out of Notre Dame, and that is only his second catch of the year. Brings it out to the 20-yard line. You know, the, the Giants, and really both these teams, want to use the tight end as you look at Derrick Brown. But you feel that the Giants' passing game really has not been the same since Mark Bavaro left. I mean, Mark Bavaro set up so many things for the wide receivers in the back of the backfield. And that is still a missing ingredient for the Giants. Brown's biggest problem is learning to block in their system. Second down and four. And Hampton spinning, trying to get the first down. He needed to get out to the 26-yard line. Hampton with Brad Edwards entangled with him there. You know, Brad Edwards was saying last night, a, a safety, a free safety's nightmare, and he's number 27 in the white jersey, nightmare is to see a big old back like Hampton come through the hole, and there's nobody between you and the running back. Well, he got a face full of Rodney Hampton there, but still brought him down. It was enough for the first down. Hostetler going up top. Engram, the intended receiver. A.J. Johnson's there. And that's twice now that Johnson has been stride for stride with Mark Engram. Hostetler took another good shot when he released the ball. He did. He is taking a beating. Well, I'll tell you, it was a pretty good blitz there. Oof. Again, I think it was his ribs that he hurt. Yeah, it, it's his ribs that he hurt early in the game. And Tim Johnson, thus far, has played very well for the Redskins on the run and there on the pass. Ostentler, four of nine now for 44 yards. Yeah, there, there's uh, Tim Johnson, number 78. I mean, he is winning the battle right now against William Robbins. Megan comes in in the backfield. 
being flushed out. Hostetler gets rid of it, intended for Baker, and it's almost intercepted. Govea almost had it on the deflection. Danny Copeland, the strong safety, was in the area and also got a piece of the football. And Copeland is down. And Govea got up slowly as well. I mean, and sometimes when you get so many players around the ball, you can hurt yourself. I mean, Brad Edwards is there making a play. There's Govea, number 54, Copeland, number 26. I mean, you, you want guys around for the tip balls, but every now and then you're going to run into one another. It'll come to a third down 10 as soon as we uh, had the attention given to Danny Copeland. Look at Edwards here over the top of Baker. Brad Edwards is mm. epitomizing what this Redskin team is all about. They like smart football players. You read it in the brochures. You heard the coaches mention it time and time again. And Edwards calls the defensive signals. And Danny Copeland, this guy, uh, has been another one of those plan B acquisitions like Brad Edwards was and, and provided a lot of the same smart play, don't, doesn't make mistakes for this Washington Redskin team. I mean... Uh, Brad Edwards was saying last night about Danny Copeland. Danny Copeland, I mean, does everything at about 110 miles an hour, including warming up, running out in the field, and playing defense. We're going to take a break as they look over Danny Copeland. Seven all the score, 11.36 to go in the first half. Back at RFK, we're going to look at this collision that has stopped play momentarily. Danny Copeland, 26, flying after the ball. Govea and he collide helmet to helmet, face to face. Copeland goes down. He's still on the field, being administered to. As we have a third down 10 now with 11.36, and this gives us an opportunity to bring you the U.S. Marine Corps scoreboard, looking at today's action in the NFL. Good. Barry Sanders was held down today mm -hmm. to 38 yards. How about the yeah. win by Bill Cowher Steelers? It was a good day of football. Good, a lot of good games on today. The Jets, Jets. defeating mm -hmm. the Dolphins, who have lost two in a row now. Copeland up and walking, as you can see, and that's certainly encouraging. The Saints are just quietly beating people. Yeah. No one's saying a lot about Jim Moore's team. And how about the Chargers? Four in a row. Yeah. Shutting out the Colts and Jeff George. And that was the huge game that was played in Texas Stadium, won by Dallas. And the Cardinals beating the 49ers. Third down and 10. Dave Megan is in motion. Hostetler is going to go down. That will be the 23rd sack of the year for the Redskins. And Gathers was the man who got there his second of the season, a seven-yard loss on the play. Yeah, Jeff Hostetler got a lot of pressure there early, but he was looking for Dave Megan. But Monty Coleman took Dave Megan away. I mean, he's waiting, waiting, waiting for the break, waiting for him to come open. But Imani Coleman, his 14th year as a specialized coverage guy, just shut down Dave Megan. Landetta to pump to Brian Mitchell. They're going to get away from it. The ball bouncing inside the 40-yard line. It'll roll dead at the 37. And the Redskins will get it. A 43-yard punt. Give us an opportunity to look at some of our programming coming up. Christopher Lloyd and Gregory Hines star as two bungling ex-cons to take off on an adventure to find their place in the sun. A TNT original, T-Bone and Weasel, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern, only on TNT. Talk about a good athlete. Gregory Hines is an athlete. Oh, man, can he dance? Oof. Is he the T-Bone or the Weasel, though, in this one? You know, I don't know. I assume he's the Weasel, because his name was listed second. <laughs> I, I won't say. We'll have to find out. We'll do some extensive research okay. on that. At the 37-yard line, Ricky Irvins will be pushed back. I noticed a while ago, Pat, that Biner came out of the game and he put on some running trunks or running long pants. I wonder if his legs 
trying to keep him warm a while ago as Irvins has taken over on the last two series. Yeah, and, and, the, and the Redskins have, have shifted into this no huddle situation. You see, he's got sweats on. They're like, they're like sweats. Yeah, he is staying warm. Second down and nine, a little screen dump intended for Ricky, and he can't come up with it. Yeah. Well, when you're 5'7", pretty hard to get up there for that one. Yeah, well, some of it, too, was Lawrence Taylor, though. Again, when Lawrence Taylor can still be effective on the pass rush, he got a hand up there, and I think he forced Mark Riffin, really, to kind of throw this ball a little bit higher than he wanted to. 56 on the right part of the screen. Gets his paw up, and I think he forces Riffin to throw it higher and further away from Ricky Irvins than he wanted to. Otherwise, he had a pretty good screen set up. Riffin, 2 of 6, 29 yards, third down and 9. go in motion. Rippon, good protection over the middle. The catch is made. Good grab that time over the middle by Ricky Sanders. First down across the 45 to the 43 of New York. A 19-yard gain on the play. Yeah, the, we said the biggest difference between these two teams is at wide receiver. And Ricky Sanders is just give you one example of that. He is the slot guy, and his responsibility is to just to work the middle. And when you feel man-for-man -man coverage, you hit him on the move, running away from the, the defender, and they did it there. The rookie, Felipe Sparks, trying to stay with him. Here is Irvin, and Irvin takes it to the 35-34. Gain of eight yards. It'll be second down. Lamar McGriggs on the stop for the Giants. You know, Gary, we said this is a different Redskin team than it was a year ago. You see how many the points they're down, victory margin. But look at the big plays for touchdowns. 25 or 8 last year, only three this season. And that is where they've been struggling on the timing passes. Pressure from the backside, and Lawrence Taylor got there and hurried the play up. And number 56 is still all you can handle coming off of that corner. Danny Copeland, we understand, a neck sprain. X-rays being taken, and um, we just hope that uh, when we get further word that uh, he'll be able to come back soon for the Washington Redskins. Third down, and still a long two. Goes in motion. Rippon. Falling down on the far side was Clark. He was spinning his wheels, so to speak, as he tried to come back to the ball. Mark Collins was defending on the play for the Giants. You, know, you looked at Gary Clark's cleats there. I don't think he changed to that, that three-quarter inch cleat. I mean, we saw some of the linemen change into it, but wide receivers don't like to do that. They stay with the half-inch cleats, and he did slip coming out of the break. Fourth down. Good but more punt. Maggot at the 10 yard line. <laughs> Trying to keep it in the field of play. And Maggot will fair catch it at the 11 yard line. Giants will have it there. It's 7 all, 9 16 to go. NFC East going after each other again. Seven all, 9-16 to go in the second quarter from RFK Stadium. Joe Jacoby, one of the hogs. Thus far, not a lot of offense for Washington. The big punt return is how they got on the scoreboard. Just across the 10 is where they start this drive and bunch. Able to bounce forward for maybe a yard on the play. This is a big series. I mean, really for both teams, I think. But if you think first with the Washington defense, they have an opportunity now. They played pretty well here this afternoon or this evening to really force them in a third and long situation. They've been able to rush the passer pretty well. They've wounded Jeff Hostetler and then force a punt and in this kind of weather get good field position. So this next two downs, I think, are a very important series for the Washington defense. Second down, they're going to say a long seven. Make it in the backfield. Stadler over the middle, Cross makes the catch, spin, move, and that got him the first down. This is a guy that they thought would be beaten out by Derek Brown, the number one pick, but he's such an excellent blocker. 
and has caught the ball better than they anticipated. That's a 14-yard gain on the play. Yeah, well, certainly tonight, Howard Cross has been an integral part of their passing game. And when you have weather like this, and obviously the NFC East team plays uh, play in weather like this, you need, I believe, a tight end and catch the ball because it's the easiest throw for a quarterback. He's 10 yards away from you, and he's right over the middle of it. First down at the 28. Rodney Hampton, a lot of traffic. Could not get up the field because Charles Mann was able to get at his feet and take him out from under him. Yeah, he and Tim Johnson, both. Charles Mann and Tim Johnson. Man, so impressive in visiting with him. Very articulate, very personable. And another one of those smart guys that uh, the coaching staff talks about with Washington. Went to the Pro Bowl for the fourth time in the last five years, last season. Second and 12. Stetler. Ingram is there and he makes a catch at the 45 AJ Johnson who's been defending successfully on two previous attempts couldn't get there in time and it's a 20 yard completion and Ingram looks like he is shaken up on the play he took a real shot he was unprotected high in the air and that was the first reception by a giant wide receiver tonight They've thrown three to the tight end, two to running backs, and now one to the wide receiver. It started here with pretty good protection. And I think if you have a quarterback with protection, he has confidence to hang in there and wait for a wide receiver to break open. But if you're getting rushed and you feel the pressure, you just don't have that confidence. That time, Hostetler had the time. One thing the Giants don't have is a deep threat. That's something they'd like to draft for in another year. Ingram, along with Callaway, who they have not used that much, more of the physical type receivers. Baker is their fastest, but they just don't have that guy that will run by a lot of cornerbacks. So Ingram is still down. We have 6.54 to go in this first half. Seven all from the nation's capitals. Hostetler fighting back from a tremendous shot he took and made the big play really for the Giants in this game, a 27-yard scramble that led to their only touchdown. Gary, really, Baker really sets this play up because he runs the deep out, and he takes this corner out, and here is Ingram, who they just comes and breaks in the outright. Sometimes it's the receiver away from the ball, away from the catch, that sets up the play. Baker releases outside. That allows Ingram to slip into that little dead spot and to not allow the cornerback to react in time. And then you have a completion. So good good by play by Baker. Good catch by Ingram. Ingram, their top draft pick in 81 out of Michigan State. Being assisted off the field. The first down now at the 45-yard line of New York. We'll see more of Ed McCaffrey, the second-year man from Stanford, who's a possession-type receiver. If, if, if they had a deep threat, really, Mark Ingram was probably the guy. First down. There is McCaffrey in the game, number 81 in motion. Play action fake by Hostetler. And McCaffrey, a six foot five target, makes a first down catch at the 41 yard line. Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator for the Giants, I think has done something pretty good here. In a, in a game like this, where it's wet and it's muddy and you're having trouble gra uh, grabbing the ball, holding on the ball, if you throw the ball over the middle, the ball clearly is not in the air as long and you can get it to the receiver a lot quicker. And that's what he's done. He's thrown the ball to the tight end three different times. That time on the play action fake to McCaffrey, again, right over the middle of the field. 12-yard pick up to the 42. Dumps it off to Rodney Hampton. Hampton cuts back across the 40 and takes it close to the 35. <laughs> he is so good in the open field on the cutback. Yeah. I know all the Redskins so concerned about him cutting back against the grain. Well, you're right. Brad Edwards, the free safety for the Redskins, said yesterday that you know, he, he, you're not allowed to be that big and be able to cut that well as Rodney Hampton does. I mean, there, there's Edwards. He said, this guy is huge and it's just unfair 
They can make guys miss in the open field like that. Gain of six, second and four. Bunch and Bunch has run into Govea. So instinctive. He has done so many big things for this Washington team. An eighth round draft pick in 86. Well, when you said instinctive, when you said a Govea number 54, I don't think that's just intangible things. I mean, Kurt Govea is, this, is the kind of guy that watches a lot of films, understands blocking patterns, and when he sees a guard pull or make a move, he steps in the hole. He doesn't guess. He knows where they're going. Comes out as they bring in the nickel package on third and five. This is Dave Maggots down. Joey Smith comes in motion. Maggot is in the backfield. Hostetler intended for Smith. He cannot hang on. Smith this year has not caught a pass. They've had him returning kickoffs, playing on special teams. That'll bring up fourth down and five for Ray Handley. Hostetler is still on the field. And Hanley now will send out the punter, Sean Landetta. Here's Ingram, who was hurt earlier, going into the dressing room. Gary, this is a situation, too, that, that Sean Landetta can't punt this ball into the end zone. I mean, his defense is playing well. It's a close ball game. Don't punt in the end zone. Well, he tries to pooch it for the near corner. And uh, down there is Felipe Sparks. He just saved it. There is a flag on the play. Well, he touched it out about the nine-yard line, didn't he? Not, and he downed it at the one, but I think he touched it near the ten. Giants are saying it's against the Redskins. Delay of game. They must have had 12 men on the field, Pat. The Redskins did not make their change, evidently, in time. Let's see. Howard Rowe, the referee who played with Bill Parcells at Wichita State, sorting it out at the 35-yard line. Too many men on the field, on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. Don Bro, not happy with that. Too many men on the field. As Sparks was down there trying to field it, it will give them the first down by penalty, setting it up at the 32-yard line. Let's go back to Sparks. Yeah, this is Sparks. He hit the ball there on the on that. That's where the ball was dead originally. Then he, and then they were going to try to down it on the one, but as soon as it touched him, it was dead. But that's that's uh, moot. Yep, absolutely moot. 12 men on the field keeps the Giants' drive going. One, two tackles, spins his way to the 20. Very close to the first down. And some extracurricular activity continues. You know, the, the Giants have been maligned all year, Gary, and we've talked about it, but they do have some strengths. And one of them is in the offensive line. And the offensive line on this drive has done a pretty good job. They've given Jeff Hostetler some protection, and this time they open up a crease for Rodney Hampton, and he seizes it. And any time a running back gets the, to the linebackers or the defensive backs, your offensive linemen have done a very good job. It is a first down on that excellent second effort by Hampton. Hampton straight ahead. Close to the 15-yard line. That big offensive line of the Giants now. Started to move some of those guys backwards. That was one of the matchups that Joe Gibbs was so concerned about. Well, Rodney Hampton has been a consistent runner on an inconsistent team. And I think that's saying something. They have struggled at quarterback. They've had some inconsistency at some of the other plays. But at running back into the offensive line, this has been a pretty consistent team. Gain of three, second and seven. to McCaffrey at 6-5 and the ball is caught for the touchdown there is 
where height pays off. He just reached over A.J. Johnson. Well, A.J. Johnson's 5'8". And again, a smart play by Jeff Osteller and Ray Hannon. Again, you know you have the matchup you want. You have them at 5'8 versus 6'5, and you give them a chance. Now, the nice thing there about Hosteller, too, he didn't throw the ball out of the end zone. He gave his wide receiver a chance. He didn't throw it away, even though he was covered. 89 yard drive in 12 plays. Matt Barr makes it a 14 7 game. The Giants with the lead. And here is Hostetler going to McCaffrey, who has a brother, Billy, who played on Duke's national championship basketball team. That looks like a basketball move to me. <laughs> the passing game is about confidence. And if your quarterback has confidence that a receiver can go after the ball, even when he's covered, you give him a chance. And sometimes they catch him with one hand. But Gary, Gary, the key was the penalty that gave the Giants yep. the first down. 12 men on the field, delay of game. They kept that drive going. Desmond Howard will bring this one out. He gets a block from Robert Green. And he's out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. That was a heads-up block by Robert Green. You mentioned Robert Green. Robert Green a man, uh, 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 avoided the clip. He was number 39 for the Redskins, and he avoided the clip and set up the block. Hostetler on that last drive, Pat, was 5 of 6 for 69 yards. And again, I cannot say enough about how tough he is. Both these guys, Rippon and Hostetler, are tough. And the Giants, obviously, winning time of possession. Well, you know, ordinarily time of possession, or sometimes time of possession, isn't critical. But I think it is in the NFC East. Minor. Coming back into the game after being out the last two series. Brings it out to the 32. Pepper Johnson over to make the stop for the Giants. Beiner told us yesterday it's very tough to get warmed up again when he comes out of a game. And we saw him with those long running pants a while ago. We have the two-minute warning. 14-7. The Giants with the lead. We'll be back in just a moment. His retirement. As you can see, Rippon really hasn't gotten anything going offensively, nor have the Redskins. No, they didn't, didn't really last week until the last drive when they really needed it. I mean, against the Vikings. Two minutes to go in the game. All three timeouts remaining for the Skins. Rippon, and that ball's incomplete. Mark Collins flying over Gary Clark, the intended receiver at the 45. You know, Mark Rippon Rip uh, has been out of rhythm this year, and I think he, uh, you know, he missed training camp, and I, when you think about the Redskins passing game, it is a rhythm, rhythmic type of game, particularly the deep ball, and what they've missed, they've missed the big play, and they've missed those inside the 20 type passes, and those are all timing passes. And to have those, you need your quarterback in camp. Second down. Third down. Four yards to go. Monk goes in motion. Rippon's got time. Gary Clark is there, and he could not adjust to the football. He tried to make the catch at the 31-yard line. Felipe Sparks out of Arizona State defending on the play, and it brings up fourth down. But, Gary, if you're looking for a difference between Super Bowl champions of a year ago and this year's Viking team, that, that pass is exactly the difference. I mean, they hit all of those kind of passes last year. And the deep pass, that is nothing but timing. And they're just out of sync on the deep ball. They just haven't gotten the big plays. Good burn to punt. 151 left in this first half. Dave make it. Going to let it hit. And it's going to die right there at the 32-yard line. The Giants have a chance here. I mean, they've got some pretty good field position with 138 remaining. 35-yard punt that time by Goodburn. As you mentioned, all three timeouts remaining for the Giants. Yeah, what the Giants have had some success with thus far is throwing the ball over the middle, 
the big receivers. McCaffrey's caught a ball over the middle. His tight end, Cross, has caught three passes over the middle. And it's a good strategy on a very rainy night. Rodney Hampton to the backfield. Two receivers to the near side. McCaffrey and Baker. Play action by Hostel. He gets it off to Derrick Brown. And the Notre Dame All-American drags tacklers with him. Very close to the first down. He needed to get out to the 42. This is a little delayed pass here by Derek Brown, number 86. You know, you hit man, you give him your tackle a little, little bit of help, you let the uh, wide receiver clear out a zone, and then you come underneath your wide receiver, McCaffrey. And again, uh, a simple play, a well-designed play, an easy uh, play for a quarterback to complete. A bad weather play, quite honestly. It's good. They're going to measure to see if he got the first down. Derek Brown with a catch, his second. You know, earlier today, another number one draft pick in the New York area, Johnny Mitchell, made a big play for the New York Jets in their win today. Two number ones, tight ends, going to the Big Apple this year in the draft. You know, when you think about this kind of weather and you think about Richie Pettibon, the defensive coordinator for the Redskins, I mean, this is the type of night, too, when as a defensive coordinator, you know it's hard for a quarterback to throw. And you know it's hard to throw the deep ball. So maybe you play your guys a little bit tighter, particularly on tight ends and backs out of the backfield. There's Pettibone, second down, and it'll be less than a yard to go. The line of scrimmage, the 42. Well, has Pettibone done a remarkable job this year, getting production at about 18 different players on defense. Two left. You can see the clock running now. Second down in the yard. McCaffrey comes in motion, and Hampton gets the first down out across the 45. And the Giants are going to use their first timeout. They will stop the clock with a minute five. So Hampton getting it across the 45-yard line. Ray Hanley said one thing, and it's nothing, uh, I guess, uh, profound, but he said, the only way I'm going to get things turned around is win football games. Well, I think he knows that. I think he obviously recognizes that. And, I mean, uh, he, he certainly has received his share of abuse and criticism, and he's gotten into it. He's not a media darling, and that really is his own fault. Yeah. He does not handle the press well. But I don't think his talent is good enough, really, for have, to have him judged as a failure. I think also he follows on the heels of Bill Parcells and I went to school with Bill and Bill all his life wanted to be the coach of the Giants and I think he steeled himself prepared himself to handle the media blitz to handle some of the pressures in New York and Ray has not had that kind of a background has not been prepared for what's hitting first down. on to delay to make it make it to the 50 to the 45 to the 40 breaks the tackle Danny Copeland's trying to get to him and he takes it to the 25 first down Dave Meggett plays offense like Wilbur Marshall plays defense like a bullet I mean there's no hesitation about Dave Meggett I mean he makes up his mind quickly and he accelerates very quickly that is a 30-yard gain by Megan on the delay. A timeout is called. One timeout left for the Giants. I tell you, this has been a, a very well-conceived game plan, I think, for the Giants offensively tonight. I mean, they're throwing the safe passes for bad weather to tight ends to big targets over the middle. They got mismatches down by the goal line with a 6-5 wide receiver against a 5-8 defensive back. And then an obvious passing down, they give it to Dave Meggett, the one truly explosive player on their team. I mean, this is a well-designed uh, offensive uh, game thus far. And Pat, when Joe Gibbs said yesterday to us, I can't believe we're 10-point favorites. Yeah. He you did, understand yeah. what he was talking about. He just doesn't match up well against the Giants. You, know, you, you just got to think the Giants, he can put the distractions aside when you play the Redskins. They have 226 yards in offense. A 
Stetler, pressure coming from Mann, steps up against it, gets it to McCaffrey. McCaffrey, nice spin move inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. A gain of five, and McCaffrey is wincing. As oh, we have boy. 42 seconds, clock still running as McCaffrey is down. The Giants wanting to save their final timeout. We're going to have an official's timeout now. And they want to save their wide receiver, too. Remember, Mark Ingram got carried off on a cart earlier in the game. Now Ed McCaffrey is down with an injury. And now they're going to have to use their final timeout. The Giants have used their last with 38 seconds. Let's go back now and reconstruct what happened here. Ed McCaffrey has been a big time guy tonight over the middle where Jeff Hosteller has really needed him. It didn't look like a violent hit quite honestly but it's easy for me to say. Don't forget at halftime Fruit of the Loom halftime report. Bob Neal, Kevin Kiley, the snake Ken Stabler. Do you think you ever played in this kind of weather? Snake? Been out there, yeah, in Oakland. No, they always beautiful had, you know, all the time, yeah. yeah. Bernie Johnson with all the scores and highlights. And, of course, LT, Lawrence Taylor, a visit with Kevin Kiley. So no timeouts left now for the Giants. They have second down coming up, five yards, 38 seconds left in this first half. Right now, if they were to kick the field goal, it would be 37 yards long. And Barr is 8 of 8 from anything inside 39 yards. McCaffrey looks like he's going to be all right. Yeah, so he, McCaffrey's the kind of guy you'd like to use that 6'5 height again down here inside the 20-yard line. Can you see his face mask? Say, how, when was the last time you saw a kicker's face mask all uh, chipped like that? <laughs> Stetler with time. Howard Cross with a catch to the five. First and goal. First and goal for New York. Clock running. No timeouts left. 15-yard gain. You see the time on the screen. Jeff Hostetler has used his tight ends beautifully tonight. Both of them. He'll spike it here to stop the clock with 17 seconds. Now he's got to be careful not to spike that ball inside 10 seconds. Inside 10 seconds. Yeah. So they can have a clock runoff. Now. Hostetler looking over to Hanley. 17 seconds. They're still thinking six points. Howard Cross, number 87, really that time lined up in a slot, almost as a wide receiver. But clearly the Giants' game plan is to throw to the big targets in bad weather, and the Redskins have yet to adjust. They have not stopped the tight end, and they have not slowed him down at the line of scrimmage. And the easiest thing to do to slow down a tight end don't let him off the line. They have five completions to their tight ends in this first half. McCaffrey's back in the game. Hostetler with pressure just threw it out of the back. And McCaffrey was the intended receiver. 13 seconds. Second down. Make it still four yards to go. Just inside the five-yard line. Is that... Second or third. I see a third down up there. Yes, third down. Third down. I'm sorry. Yeah, third okay. down just inside the five at the four. And Joe Gibbs is probably saying, I've been here before. Yeah. We lost six in a row to these guys before sweeping the series last year. Hostetler over the middle. Make it. Does he hang on? He does for the touchdown. You know, Gary, we said early on two things had to happen for the Giants to win. Dave Maggot had to become a factor and get the ball more, and Lawrence Taylor had to rush the quarterback. Taylor has done that in the second quarter, and Dave Maggot on this drive was a large part of it. On the draw play, catching that touchdown, and he took a couple of real shots. Speaking of shots, Monty Coleman is hurt at the 15-yard line. He suffered a concussion last week against the Minnesota Vikings. 20 to 7, New York. Sixty-eight yard drive, eight plays, one minute, thirty seconds. You know, the Giants continue and give Jim Fossil the or the uh, offensive coordinator some credit. Throw the ball over the middle. It's wet, it's raining, the ball is slippery. You don't want the ball in the air too long, so you just dink it right over the middle. That time, 
it was Megan. And he took a couple of shots right inside some linebackers. So well-designed offensive drive. The last two, last two of them have been by the Giants. You can see Coleman made the hit on Megan and is down right now. So Hostetler with two touchdown passes, one to McCaffrey and now one to Megan. In the second quarter now, he is 10 of 15 for 107 yards. Is Jeff concerned out to see how Motti's doing? Well, that's what that's what these rivalries are about, the National Football League. The Giants and the Redskins, I mean, they, they play each other twice a year. You know the personnel. You see them a lot in the offseason. And, I mean, you want to beat them, but you don't want to see them hurt. I mean, Monty, Monty Coleman, over the years, has had a remarkable career remarkable career he has done just about everything for these Redskins over the 14 years he is their oldest player on defense Jimmy Carter was president when he came into the league and Desmond Howard is in the fourth grade I wonder who's gonna be president when he goes out of the league you know? well we'll know in two days 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue but look at that we'll this have is... somebody there as of Tuesday night and uh, I don't know what the over and under is on that I just hope everybody goes out and vote goes out and vote there's a concern, Richie Pettibon. The defense has played so well this year, but tonight the giant offense really has been well-conceived and well-executed. Richie looking down at that card in disgust. Whatever was on it wasn't working thus far. Well, you know, speaking of elections, Gary, you know, it's all the pollsters say it's a rough year for incumbents. And uh, the Redskins, as incumbent Super Bowl champions, they've struggled offensively all year. They have tonight. And Joe Gibbs is, recognizes that to win a Super Bowl, you need some luck. You need some health. Okay? They have not had the health this year that they had last year. But you need to be able to win in all three phases, special teams, defense, and offense. But he's not been able to do it on offense this year. So Coleman is up. He'll be celebrating a birthday on Wednesday. He will be 35 years old. What would you get him? Something real nice. Well, I want to tell everybody year. across the country. This is kind of personal, <laughs> private, one-on-one. -on -one. I know it's not expensive as you got it. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew it. Bar point after now with eight seconds left in the half. 21-7, the Giants. You know, it's been a while since we looked at that touchdown. Let's take another look. And, and, you know, sometimes you use your hands. Sometimes you catch them with your pads and rips and ribs. And other times you kind of bounce them off your helmet. And that's what happened there to Dave Maggot. But never lost concentration. You knew he was going to get powered or powdered by two inside linebackers. But Dave Maggot was the guy they wanted. The Giants wanted to have the ball in his hands. And you understand why. He may have gotten this team going offensively. That was the one thing they needed was somebody to make the big play, and he did on the drive twice. His first touchdown catch of the year. Barr will come in to kick off with eight seconds left. You know, Gary, we've talked about, everybody talks about time of possession, and generally I don't think that, that means a lot, but particularly in NFC East games, and I think particularly games in bad weather, it is very much an indicator. The Giants have controlled the ball for over 20 minutes this first half. Redskins have moved their coverage team up. Desmond Howard is back deep at the 10. Is they're going to squid this one? And bringing it out. Martin Mayhew, and with three seconds left from the 35, the Redskins will have one snap. For the Loom halftime report coming up. Be sure and stay with us. The guys look like they're high and dry down there. Have a canopy over them. Again, an interview with Lawrence Taylor. There they are. Gosh, those guys look serious. Yeah, why so somber? It's not like them. Come on, guys, get a life down there. <laughs> Rippin rolling out as time has expired in the first half. The Big Ben play. And Sanders, the intended receiver, it's broken up, and we come to the halftime. A surprise here at RFK Stadium. Ray Hanley, a man who's been besieged, has a 21-7 halftime lead. Announced an NFL Charities grant to the Lombardi Cancer Center at Georgetown University.
making the total commitment to the center two million dollars there's Jack Kent Cook the owner of the Redskins and probably not a very happy owner right now as the Giants after dropping behind early in this game after an 84 yard punt return by Brian Mitchell seven to nothing have scored 14 unanswered points and Monty Coleman, we understand, suffered a pinched nerve in his neck. He is questionable for the rest of the game as Mitchell, the guy who had that long return on a punt, back for the kickoff along with Desmond Howard. Here we go, second half. Howard across the 25, and the Heisman Trophy winner brings it to the 35-yard line. Should the Redskins lose tonight, they would have three losses in the division. And look at this. The last six years, two's the most you could lose. Well, that's, that's the way the NFC East head coaches, too, look at the, the records. I mean, you talk to Jimmy Johnson, you talk to Joe Gibbs and Ray Hanley, say, you, you, you know, you have to, you can't have any more than two losses in the division. You don't have a chance. We have a flag on the Personal play. Personal foul. Number 21 on a kicking team, 15-yard penalty. Wow. First down. That's Renee Thompson. And that is just what Mark Rippon needed. I mean, he gets a pretty good return, and then the penalty, and then you're already in Giants territory before you snap the ball once. And Ray Hanley is not a happy camper. That's the best starting field position for the Redskins tonight as they'll start from the Giants 49. Play action fake. Rippon a lot of time to Biner. Biner makes a nice move. He's got the first down. Inside the 40 to the 37 yard line, a gain of 11. Gary, that was a perfect example of the Redskins' theory of throwing the ball. Great protection for Rippett, and their first look is deep. He looks deep for a wide receiver, then he comes to an intermediate receiver. If nobody's open, he dumps it off to a back, Ernest Biner. You know, the Redskins are only giving up, what, 252 Two. yards yeah. a game, and they've already given up 250 in the first half. only the fourth first down of the game on that last play by Washington. Rippon will just get rid of that one. Clark had double coverage inside the 20-yard line. Diossi and McGriggs defending on Clark. You know, th this is a really important drive for Mark Rippon and the Washington Redskins. They're down 21-7. to But they get the good field position on their opening drive. And and we've said it before, Gary, the opening possession, I think, of either half really sets the tone for your team the rest of that half. So this is what Mark Rippon needs to do. He needs to get the ball into the end zone. And Joe Gibbs' team has not scored a touchdown in the last nine quarters. Offensive touchdown. That's right. They have the punt return. Here is Rippon over the middle. And Terry Orr makes the catch, and that is a first down. Well, interesting adjustment. Everybody talks about Joe Gibbs being an adjustment coach. Now, he saw what the Giants did in the first half, throwing the ball over the middle, throwing the ball to tight ends. And this is just what he does. He comes right back, Mark Ribbon, for the first pass attempt of the evening to a tight end. That one to Terry Orr, actually the H-back. He's wide open, right over the middle of the field. That's where all the pass offense has been tonight. First down. Straightened up as he reaches the 25. Big hit that time by Lamar McGriggs. We talked about him bulking up from 210 to 218 pounds, staying around the Giants complex and just pumping iron. McG McGriggs is coming up. Both safeties are going to make a play in here, but watch McGriggs as he comes up and makes the play at the line of scrimmage. That's what you need your safeties to do. Play close to the line of scrimmage, but don't get fooled on play action. Second and nine. <laughs> Sanders in motion. Rippon looking his way, then dumps it off to Orr again. And Orr is going to be tackled at the 21-yard line. Still some four yards short of the first down. Carl Banks made the tackle. You know, really, uh, the Giants have been criticized this year for their offense, you know, being, being designed by Pat Buchanan or, or Franco. I mean, been that <laughs> conservative. But isn't it interesting? The, the Redskins come right back out in the second half and imitate Ray Hanley's offense. Again, this, the pass to the tight end over the middle, the safe pass. I tell you, Gibbs makes a lot of good battlefield decisions. Makes excellent adjustments. Third down, three. Rip 
open with time. Intended for Biner. That's where they've been out of sync a lot this year, Pat, is yep. that long, deep pass. It hasn't looked good all year long. You're right, particularly when they get down in scoring territory. And what in, in that kind of pass, it's a timey pass. As soon as your back foot plants, you're going to see the back fin of Rippon. The ball has got to be on its way. And when it's on, there's his back foot planted. The receiver's obviously covered right here. So there's no timing, no coordination between thrower and receiver. And, and, and the deep ball is a matter of timing. They don't have it. 38-yard attempt. Will Miller's hit eight in a row. Five for five last weekend. The streak has ended. Missing wide left. And it remains 21-7, New York. Low Miller was so deadly in the Metrodome, but this time didn't do it. Low Miller missing from 38 yards. He is two of seven from 30 to 39, even though he hit his last eight in a row. Shoulders turned up the field and barely got a yard. Wilbur Marshall was there first. Gary, if the Washington Redskins are going to win this football game, they're going to have to do it on defense. And it's guys like Wilbur Marshall and Charles Mann and Tim Johnson and Kurt Govea they are going to have to win the game. Their offense is clearly struggling. They're down by 14 points. If they're going to win it, the defense has to get some turnovers. Well, they bailed them out all year long. Second down and nine. And falling down was Chris oh. Callaway, and now we have a penalty flag. He and A.J. Johnson were entangled at the 35-yard line. Callaway, who gave up the touchdown catch to McCaffrey. It's going to be interference against Washington. Pass interference, number 47 defense, first down. Callaway at the top of the screen, number 80, against A.J. Johnson. A.J. Johnson's been awfully good deep on the deep routes. He He's did have his jersey. Yeah. He dragged him down. So the first down on the penalty, just short of the 35. Stetler, protection is excellent. Going deep, Stephen Baker's there. Oh. He overthrew him. It was Johnson they were picking on again. He's the guy that's replaced Daryl Green just a little too long. But you know, Jeff Osteller knows you only have maybe three, four of those in an entire NFL season when you have a wide receiver wide open for a touchdown. Look at the pass distribution here for the Giants. McCaffrey has got the three. The running backs have the four among those. The tight ends have five receptions. But most of the passing yardage has come over the middle. That time, a wonderful change of pace there by the Giants as they try to go deep over the middle. Everything was short. Then they go deep. He was wide open. Second down and 10. Dumps it off to Hampton. Hampton to the 35 and is able to drag a tackler close to the 39-yard line. Danny Copeland over there to make the stop. They say that Hampton has become the complete back this year. Running with the ball, receiving the ball, and also has become a very fine blocker. You know, sometimes you have to try to get the quarterback's attention, and you'll do anything you can. You yell at him, you scream at him, you clap at him sometimes. Give me the ball. And then you get your shoulders turned, you pick up a, a block by your wide receiver, and you pick up about four yards. Third down and six. Ostetler. Nice catch by McCaffrey, and that'll be a first down at the 50-yard line, an 11-yard grab. And McCaffrey 
Yeah, but a strong game. He has four catches for 45 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, it's beginning to look like Soldier Field with, with dirt <laughs> clods all over guy's helmet. But where, where again is this pass? Right over the middle. Now, you, you think maybe to make an adjustment defensively, you, play, you at least play one linebacker in zone or something over the middle to take away those short inside routes because the Washington Redskins have been playing man-to-man -man over the middle, and McCaffrey's running away from the defense. Okay, that line's giving him time to throw the football. First down at the 50, Bunch will get a chance, and nothing developing there. Fred Stokes, who started playing very strongly at the start of this game, was there to greet him at the line of scrimmage. Stokes is not very big by most standards in the NFL, but as the coaches were telling us, he's such a good athlete. Well, watch Fred Stokes, number 60, for the Redskins. Just stand him up. I mean, you know, he got rid of a blocker, and then he takes all 250 pounds of Jared Bunch on. That's not a new dance step, if you're wondering. <laughs> he doesn't, certainly doesn't go down easily, does he? Second down, 10. McCaffrey comes in motion. Now Stetler this time being flushed out. Good pressure that time from Eric Williams. Yeah, a lot of communication before that pass was thrown between Jeff Hostetler and Ed McCaffrey. I mean, they were waving at one another and talking to one another and screaming at one another when he was going in motion, and it finally, it finally developed. But it was a good inside pass rush for the first time this half. And really, the, the game opened up with the Redskins. The Redskins put some inside pressure on. And Dave Maggett can help you with some of that inside pressure because he'll take on linebackers and he'll take on defensive tackles and defensive ends. Third down and 10 for the 50-yard line. Delay handoff to Megat. Megat going wide, 45. He will not get the first down. Danny Copeland, who had been shaken up earlier in this game, has come back to play very strongly for the Redskins. <laughs> Dave Vegas saying the official there, they got him last. Oh, you see that? <laughs> Dave Vegas, again, dirt clods and all. Got somebody to laugh. And, and that's one of the things the Giants haven't been doing a lot of this year, is laughing. And I think when you laugh and you play with some passion and you win like they are, it makes the football a lot more fun, doesn't it? This is real football weather, right? Mud, rain, grass stuck in your helmet. And I'm from California. I like sunshine, 70 degrees. Better with his fifth punt, and he really hit this one for him. Shanky very Whoa. much. Oh, wow. He has not been punting as well this year. He was a punter for the decade of the 80s, but right now the 90s not going all that well. That's a 17-yard effort. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden, 7.50 to go, third quarter. After a 17-yard punt, the Redskins have it at their own 27. Rippin, a completion for a first down to Art Monk, and he keeps his string alive. Now a catch in 140 consecutive games, 17-yard gain on the play. And the Redskins trying to change the rhythm of the game, go with a no huddle. It's the second time they've used it tonight, second different series they've used it tonight, and, and they're just trying to get into rhythm of flow, which they have not been in all evening. Ricky Evans in the backfield. Ripping the monk again. Good coverage by Renee Thompson. Pat, when you see the Redskins, you usually think a big play team, but they haven't had the big plays. And tonight, they've had only two completions over 20 yards and no run over seven yards in length. Well, Gary, we, we said before that that is the defining characteristic of the Super Bowl team of a year ago is they came up with a big pass play early in the game. And early in the game, they knocked teams out last season. But they have not had those... Three pass plays this year, over 25 yards. Second down, 10. Rippon. Monk coming back to the football, makes the catch, and that'll be a first down at the 45 of New York. 12-yard completion. Perry Williams defending on the play. 
And the man who's caught more footballs than anybody in the history of the NFL, Art Monk, now starting to carry the Redskins on this drive. 830. He needed 19 to pass Steve Largent at the start of the year. Urbans. And he's met in the hole by Eric Howard. Pepper Johnson. Jerry, let's go back to the prior play, the out catch by, by Art Monk. Now, Art Monk is down here, and I think this is unusual because most teams run routes off the numbers. And when a receiver lines up outside the numbers, generally they're going to run inside. I think which makes the, the Redskins unusual and unconventional is they'll have receivers line up outside and then run outside routes. You can't really get a key by the splits, by the splits by the wide receivers. Second down and 10, sprinting away to buy some time is Rippon, and it's almost picked off by Renee Thompson. Two times the NFL Special Teams Player of the Year, and he almost made a special play there. You got to be tough to have the first name of Renee, right? Yeah, absolutely. You play in New York and. You play football and your name Renee, you better make some plays, and, and he did. Third down coming up. Third and ten thus far. The skins two of eight. But that's what the Giants need on defense, quite honestly, is some of the other guys. Everybody depends upon Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall too much. They need other players to step up if the Giants are going to get back in the NFC red, uh, race. Clark in motion. Rippon going to Monk again. Coverage that time by Perry Williams. This Giants team has only four interceptions and none of them by their starting cornerbacks coming into this game, but able to stop this drive. Now, Art Monk has a double out cut that he's made famous. Now, that time he was trying to set up a deep route and then come back, fake the deep route, but Perry Williams was not fooled. I mean, that, that is as good as you can cover it by Perry Williams right there. Goodburn to punt, 6.03 to go in the third. 21-7, New York. And that ball hit kind of funny. Maggot's got a return. And to the 24-yard line. At the 24, the Redskins have the football. 27-yard punt, six-yard return. John Brantley on the tackle. Bailed out Joe Gibbs all year. Now the offense is going to have to get it done. You know, the defense has faltered for the Redskins tonight. 272 yards. We've talked about what the Redskins have not been able to do in offense, and that's coming up with the big play uh, in the passing game. Now, to me, that's a big surprise because we also said that's what really differentiated these te teams, the wide receivers. But I think you have to give the Giants some real credit. Uh, their offensive game plan has been a good, bad weather game plan and their defense has taken away the deep ball of the Redskins. Just inside the 25, the Giants will start the series. Hosteller with people in his face tried to make a connection with McCaffrey at the 35-yard line. Now Jeff Hosteller has really impressed me tonight. You know, and, and to me, to a lot of people, he's still an unproven quantity. In the sense that although he came in and was played very well in that Super Bowl year in 1990, he has yet to play a full 16-game schedule. And Bill Sims is not rehabbing that elbow the way they thought. He had arthroscopic surgery to take bone chips out. He may not get back this year. They're not very encouraged by his recovery at this stage. Second down, 10. Howard Cross broken up nicely by Andre Collins. Down the seam was Cross. That would have been a big gainer if they'd made that connection. Uh, another throw down the middle. But they're still letting the tight end release too easily off the line of scrimmage. But Andre Collins was beaten early. But as a linebacker, just like defensive backs do, Andre Collins has some makeup speed, some closing speed. And he did it right there. A beautiful picture, yeah. a Halloween picture. He looks like a defensive guy, doesn't he? <laughs> Third down, 10. Must have been an off day or something. Had a bad meal. Hostetler will run. Slides, as they instructed him to do for the first time. And he is very close and does have the first down just across the 35. Yeah, he, he thought a flag should have been thrown. I mean, I, I don't agree with Jeff Hostetter on that play, but he thought he was hit after he slid feet first. 
uh, th there's some real patience in the pocket, and that takes some discipline. Good protection. He goes feet first. He's not supposed to be hit, but I think those players were already moving. You know, I think Ostetler, you look back in this game thus far, still the biggest play was when he yeah. scrambled that time for 27 yards. That really lifted this team. And two plays earlier, remember, he was hurt, and he was hurt badly. First down at the 35. Little pitch near side. Hampton on an option, if you will, and Hampton takes it to the midfield stripe before he's grounded there by Brad Edwards. And say what you will about the Giants game plans this year. This has been a creative one. I mean, we have seen tight ends. We've seen some deep throws. And now we see an option play. And the little fake, you pitched the ball out to Rodney Hampton, who ran some option plays at, when he was at the University of Georgia. And again, that's, again, just a well-conceived play. 15-yard gain. This could be a huge drive of the Giants score again and make the Redskins have to score three times in this game. Yeah, if they score a touchdown here, the game's over. I promise you. After 49 of the skins, Hampton again. Hampton close to eight yards as he's taken it to the 43 of Washington. Collins on the stop for the Redskins. You know, earlier in the game, Rodney Hampton had some big holes to run through, Gary. But even when you don't get big holes, sometimes you make them. Some running backs run to daylight. Other running backs create daylight. And Rodney Hampton is one of those guys that can create daylight. Second down. Makes it four yards to go. Punch the other half of that big, strong backfield. Doesn't get a lot on this play. Fred Stokes again. Standing up Bunch. He and Bunch are having a lot of collisions on that line of scrimmage. Very good balance, Pat. Prior to that last play, 157 yards rushing for the Giants, 148 passing. Well, both head coaches said this week, when you ask about this game plan, said, hey, this isn't, this isn't a fancy game plan. We need balance. We need to run the ball and pass the ball. And as you said, just there, the Giants have got all the balance tonight. Third and four. A flag on the play. We had some movement. It looked like both tackles, Riesenberg and Elliott, had backed up to pass block. Let's see what it's all about. Prior to the snap, we got false start, number 72 offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. It's Riesenberg, but it could have been Elliott as well. well I'll tell you, that, that's a big penalty, though, because then you, you go from, what, third and five to third and ten or third and four to third and nine, I guess. And, you know, when you're in the four-down range, you have a lot of different options. I mean, you can throw a little flare, let the running back break a tackle, pick it up. You can throw the tight end over the middle. At nine yards, it's a completely different down and di different play selection. Third down and nine. Stetler standing tall, trying to hit Joey Smith. That's twice now. He's tried to hit Smith over the middle, and it's been just a little too tall. You know, I, I, thought, I think he may have been throwing a Chris Calloway on that one. I mean, you're right, Smith got his hand on the ball, but behind him, Chris Calloway had run a hook route, number 80, and was open. But I, I tell you, I'm really impressed with the patience that Hostetler has thrown in the pocket. Ooh. Now watch Calloway, number 80, behind Smith. See, well, I, you might be yeah, right. I, I think Callaway interfered with a wide open Chris Callaway. I'm sorry, uh, Joey Smith did. Well, Smith has not caught a ball all year, figuring more in the offense with Ingram Hurt. Landetta gets this one very high at the 10. Mitchell will bring it up the field and his forward progress to the 15. 40 yard punt, six yard return. The Redskins down by 14 points, 220 left to go in the third quarter. Twenty one seven the Giants and it continues to rain here in the nation's capital. One of our cameramen Eric Norberg <laughs> is using all the towels and then some trying to yeah. keep from uh, getting completely washed away. And I tell you these cameramen they work hard on these kind of nights. 
First down at the 15 for Rippon. Rippon giving off to Finer. Finer weaves his way out to the 20, a gain of five. You know, with two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter and the Giants up 21 to seven, I really believe the Redskins have to score on this possession. This is what I was talking about earlier, Pat. That just isn't Washington Redskin no. football. No, well, you're right, but we've talked about the timing. Deep passes requires timing. They've been out of sync all year in the passing game. You can go back and say, hey, Rippon wasn't in for training camp or lots of other things, but it comes down to time. Second down, a long four. Viner running behind Joe Jacoby and didn't get much on that play. It'll bring a third down and still three yards. Here's tonight's Silver Bullet scoreboard as we look at today's action in the NFL and what happened as we've come to the halfway point of the season. The Jets with that win over the Dolphins, their second win of the year. The Bills, that was not an easy game mm -hmm. today. The Patriots still looking for their first win. Ingles ended a five-game losing streak. Third down and three yards to go. Rippon to Monk, and Monk goes high for the catch to make the first down grab at the 28-yard line. Perry Williams defending on the play as we go back to the scoreboard. And I tell you, Bobby Ross really got the Chargers playing well. They lost, what, the first four, then they come back and win the next four. Well, and that game in Texas Stadium and the Cardinals, congratulations to Joe Bugle and his troops defeating the 49ers in Sun Devil Stadium. You still live out in Phoenix, Mike. don't you, Gary? First down now from the 29-yard line. I bet it's not raining there. <laughs> Ripping back to throw. Complete to Monk, and Monk has an eight-yard pickup on the play. Yeah, isn't it interesting, though, for the Washington Redskins, when you need to have something happen or need a player to make something happen, you go to Art Monk. The play before, it was third and, what, four? They throw the ball to Art Monk. He picks up the first down to keep the drive alive. Then they come right back to him. As we now come to the end of the third quarter, well, they stopped it with two seconds as uh, Rippon will come to the near side. Monk in this quarter has four catches for 44 yards. And you kind of sense that he's given Rippon some confidence that he's there, he's available, he's open. Well, you know, I think the highest compliment you can play, pay any receiver is that he's consistent. And Art Monk has been consistently open for 13 years and consistently caught the football. And you're right. That gives a quarterback confidence. You protect the quarterback, that gives him confidence. You throw the ball to Art Monk, and that gives you more confidence. Short of the first down, so the measurement stopping the clock with two seconds. You know, I think it's interesting. You talk to Joe Gibbs about Art Monk, and he, you know, he's the kind of player you measure a lot of other players by. You say, gosh, if you, if you practice as hard as Art Monk, or if you, you know, were di as disciplined as Art Monk, or if you studied as hard as Art Monk. I mean, Art Monk is the measuring stick for Joe Gibbs. Does it very quietly. Doesn't say an awful lot. Of course, making history this year. Coming the all-time leading receiver in NFL history. And so we're not going to get another snap as they start the clock after the measurement. And three quarters are history here at RFK Stadium. And the Giants maintaining that 14-point lead. We start the fourth quarter on a second down and a yard to go. And they pick up the first down. Biner carrying forward progress just about the 44-yard line. Each quarter, a team averages about three possessions, Gary. And again, the Redskins are now down by two touchdowns. So I think every possession becomes critical, and virtually every po possession, perhaps, becomes a four-down possession. Diner oh. oh. once again. Pepper Johnson making the stop. Crowd not liking that conservative call as they bring it to the 42. Pepper Johnson led the Giants in tackles for the third time in six years. He's a fiery guy. He'll speak his mind. Second down and seven now for the Skins. We played a minute of the fourth quarter. Three, three, three. 
Rippon to Monk. Monk to the 35 first down. And again, number 81 is the primary guy in the second half. That is a 17-yard completion. Well, let's take a look at two of the best players in football. First, Art Monk. This is a guy that gets more production out of motion and shifting than any receiver, I think, in the history of the game. He has a feel for the soft spots. He uses the motion to set people up. And then LT. I mean, you, you tell me, what, that guy should not be ever be Ooh. pass coverage. Boy, Ed I Simmons mean, got a snoot full there, didn't he? First down. And they're behind. It's LT with the big defensive play. And the Giants have recovered. Now, I know quarterbacks still feel Lawrence, fearing because I, I talked to him. Offensive tackles still fear Lawrence Taylor as a pass rusher. No one fears him in pass coverage. But when he comes like that, I mean, look out. And, you know, Joe Gibbs says, the first thing I do is try to protect my quarterback's blind side. Because if you have a quarterback who thinks his blind side is protected, he can be confident. But you're never confident when Lawrence Taylor's on your backside. Well, Joe Gibbs kept telling everyone he still sees the same LT, and there was a flash of it. Two in a row. Two flashes there. The fumble recovery at the 46. Hampton wedges it up to the 50-yard line. Andre Collins on the stop. We talked about he set such a high standard, he being LT. At age 33, it's very hard sometimes to maintain that level of play. But you still see how disruptive he can be. There's what he has done against the Skins. In the last 20 games he played against, he had 18 sacks. Yeah, and remember, he's generally getting blocked by two or three guys. And Joe Gibbs designed the one-back offense just to block Lawrence Taylor. Second and six. Hampton with Fox throwing the block. Hampton cutting it for the first down. He's still on his feet to the 30. He's to the 25 to the 18-yard line and tackle there. Gary, there was some absolutely sensational blocking. Eric Moore, the tight end, Jared Bunch. And Eric Moore, the right guard, number 60. Watch him. 72, Riesenberg is there as well. Bunch, number 33. Brunch gets a block there. There's one block by number 33. Moore kicks him up. A bunch keeps going. He's going to block a second guy. I mean, you had, there's Riesenberg again, number 72, 15, 20 yards downfield. That's wonderful blocking by the Giants' offensive line. Hampton's got over 100 yards, 102 for the night. On the 18-yard line, here he goes again. And he's just getting heated up as he takes it to the 15. Brad Edwards made the stop. You know, Hampton still has had the best rushing day of anybody this year. He had 167 yards against the Cardinals. What did Emmett Smith have today? 163. So he's still got not only the best day, but the longest run from scrimmage this year of 63 yards. You know, Gary, I, I am really surprised. I'm obviously surprised at this game, but I'm equally as surprised that the Giants have lost four times this year. I mean, I know, I know it's difficult to be consistent in the National Football League, but th this is a giant team that has played very well against the incumbents, the incumbent Super Bowl champions. From the 15-yard line, second down and seven. There's that option again to Hampton. Wilbur Marshall able to catch up with him inside the 10. Yeah, I think if you're going to run the option play, you're better off running it away from Wilbur Marshall. Now watch the pursuit here by number 58, Wilbur Marshall. Now, he is beaten, but again, the closing speed against a back, Rodney Hampton, who's got some speed himself. And when you have a linebacker that's hustling like that, even when you're down by 14 points, you have a chance of having a very successful season. They're going to measure again. We talked about how effective Washington's defense had been. The longest run they had allowed coming into this game was 23 yards. There have been three longer than that tonight against them. Well, so you got you got to put some of it though on the Washington offense because the Washington offense has been virtually non-existent tonight. And really, Richie Pettibon's defense has been on the field way, way too long. 
And, you know, it, it, and the reason it takes about, at least coaches and players say, it takes about twice as much energy to play defense than offense because you don't know where the ball's going and so on and so forth. So that's why time of possession can be a critical factor. The measurement is, in fact, a first down. First and goal from the eighth. Hampton again. Hampton just keeps pumping those legs, takes it close to the five. Prior to that snap, the Giants have had the football over 31 minutes in this game. And this is a game at this point that offensive linemen love because they know they have won the game. Offensive linemen and defensive linemen. And, you know, when you get in the NFC East, the two yards on either side of the neutral zone are the most critical. In a lot of other divisions, everybody's looking for open space. But in the NFC East, it's two sides on either side of the neutral zone. Second and goal from the five. Bootleg. Hostetler breaks the tackle. And gets back to the line of scrimmage. Somehow he got away from Fred Stokes. However, you got to give Stokes a lot of credit. He did not buy the fake. Yeah, I, I admire Jeff Hosteller, but I mean, I think he's he's got to go down here. I mean, you, you've got two rookie quarterbacks behind you. You're about to win the fourth game to go four and four on the year. Get down, get out of bounds. Don't put your right shoulder into the defender. I mean, that's how you lose your only veteran quarterback for the rest of the year. It'll be third and goal, just inside the five. Well, they've had some success throwing the ball to McCaffrey down here on some height mismatches. Mi mismatches. Seventh play of this drive. Hand off to Megat. Megat trying to get into the end zone. <laughs> and they say he is just short. Tim Johnson denied him. Say, <laughs> some guys have a nose for the goal line. And, you know, sometimes it starts at a one-yard line. Well, Dave Megan, his nose for the coach starts at about the 15-yard line. It's fourth down, and you saw Hanley. Let's kick it. Barr is going to come in. Again, an another, another nice call. I, I actually thought he got down there. Look at Johnson, though. He's just not going to let Megan fall forward. Knees down. Uh, you know, from that angle, I'm not sure you can see if the ball was over, but he, that may have been a touchdown. Barr will come in. Again, if he kicks that, that means the Redskins going to have to score three times. And we're going to have a timeout call. Timeout by New York. It's we're like going to look again. You be the guy to make this call, oh, Mr. Hayes. You didn't say you make the call, did you? Face mask there. But there's a ball across the plane. No, you, may, you be the judge, Gary. <laughs> timeout. Matt Barr will attempt an 18-yard field goal. He is 8 of 8 this year, 40 yards or less. His three misses have come from 49, 50, and 51 yards. Redskins have any chance at all. They have to block. I mean, there's just no two ways, or, no two ways about it. Hostetler to hold. And the kick by Barr right down the middle. But, Gary, let's go back. I, I think may get scored. We were talking, we couldn't really see it in the pile of bodies, but here's here's the here's Megan right here, and we're in the, the draw play. And when his knee touches down, right there, I think the ball had crossed the plane of the goal line. That's a touchdown for the Giants. Mitchell is going to be the man to bring it up the field. Bulldogs him down. And now for the Azuzu play of the day. Let's go to Atlanta. Here's Ernie Johnson. All right, thank you very much, Gary. If you're a regular viewer of TNT, of course, you know the Azuzu play of the day is usually one of the great plays of the day. Today, we show you a, a pass completion that will not appear in the stats. The Silver Dome Rodney Pete to a wide open Sterling Sharp of the Packers. Sterling thrilled about it. Rodney Pete not because the Pack beat the Lions. That's the Azuzu play of the day. Back to Gary Bender. <laughs> You've probably thrown a few like that yes, in your career, absolutely. weren't you? Absolutely, and they've been returned for touchdowns by the guys in the sidelines. 
First down for the Skins at the 23, trailing 24-7. Trying to make a connection with Ricky Urban's at the 50. But another deep ball missed thrown. Another deep ball with a receiver open. But just the timing has not been there for the Redskins all season long. But Joe Gibbs told us, he said, we did not play well in the preseason. He said Mark did not play well in the preseason. Never have gotten in sync. You know, the year that they won it in 87, remember they came back and were 7-9 and nine yeah. the next year. It's tough coming back after being a Super Bowl champion. Well, this isn't a 7-9 and nine team, but they have a lot of work to do to win the NFC East, I promise you. Second down 10 for the Skins. Rippon to Clark, and Gary Clark has had a really tough night. He is such an intense competitor. He's probably his most severe critic, and he has just not been able to hang on. He's had one catch for 21 yards. Yeah, well, you know, he when they've had big plays over the years, Gary Clark has been responsible for most of them. Now, he can be a streaky guy. When he is on, you want to get him the ball as much as you can, but when he's having some problems catching the ball, you know, he did last week against the, the, uh, the Vikings a little bit, and he has tonight, but you still have to give Gary Clark a lot more chances. Redskin team, next three weeks go on the road as Rippon comes out, hits Sanders. Sanders being chased by Sparks. And Felipe Sparks drops him at the 47-yard line, a 25-yard gain. And that, that was a heck of a throw by Mark Rippon. That ball was may have, be, have to be surgically removed from Sanders' chest after the game. Yeah. That looked like the Redskins yeah. of old there. First down, they mark it at the 49. Leonard Marshall may have jumped, make that Keith Hamilton, the rookie out of Pittsburgh, 75. Let's see if he was drawn off. Skins anticipating it's against them. Prior to the snap, we got false start. Offense number 76, five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Ed Simmons was the guy who left. You know, we really talked about, look at Ricky Sanders, he's inside the numbers. Now, the numbers on the field, on the football field, are the defining mark for really all receivers in the National Football League. They always say, hey, you line up inside the numbers or outside the numbers, but what makes the Redskins unusual, they'll line up inside the numbers and then run inside routes. Contrarians. First down and 15, Rippon to Clark. And that ball way short of the mark. Mark Collins there defending on the play. Rippon now 12 of 29 for 163 yards. You know, quarterbacks are gonna have games like this. And you know, Mark Rippon was beaten up badly last week against the Vikings. He's not played well tonight. You see the 12 of 29 for the 163 yards, no touchdowns. And the two touchdowns by Jeff Hostetler, really the difference in this ball game. But the thing is, I, you can't let your quarterback get too down. I mean, the biggest ingredient, as Joe Gibbs says, you need mental toughness to fight through games like this. I tell you, Rippon, if he's anything, he's mentally tough. He is a tough customer. There's a pass completion to Sanders. He'll get out of bounds and also get the first down. Was he said, I want mentally tough quarterbacks who secondly are smart, and then comes the physical ability as the third attribute. Yeah, and when he says about mental toughness, it's to be able to fight through games like this and come back and play well and win in the fourth quarter or maybe win next week to not be concerned about the rush, always be looking downfield. To, and that's what he's had. Now, it's been a miserable night for him tonight, but the real test is how well will he play next week. Yeah. They've had no offensive touchdowns in 10 quarters. There's a flag on the play. Monk is there. There's another flag. Two flags. Monk being covered by Mark Collins. Okay, Gary Lawrence Taylor is still playing hard. I mean, the last two downs, he has been on the tail of Mark Rippon. I mean, mm. two guys, we went to Ricky Irvin, Irvin's the, the left tackle as well. A lot of wannabe. We've got offsetting fouls, holding. <laughs> Alawanibi is growing up in a hurry, isn't he, on that side, replacing Jim Lachey. Big Mo, yeah. Ricky Irvin's We've got five, offsetting seven. fouls, holding on the offense, illegal contact on number five defense, 
Fouls off sets, replay down one. Sorry to say, Ricky Irvins is 5'7", and if he blocks like that, and as Taylor run into him very many times, he's gonna be about 5'5". Five, five. There's Ella Wanibi. Is that a correct my pronunciation from a moment ago, Gary? Thank you for letting me do that. But he's a guy, or just say Mo, and That's I feel right. much more comfortable with that, quite honestly. But he, he's played pretty well. In the last three weeks, he's had to play against Clyde Simmons of the Eagles, Chris Dolman of the Vikings, and Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall tonight. First down and Rippon with people around him gets rid of the ball. Ron Middleton is able to make the catch. And by the way, that's his first catch of the year. Another flag, however, as Ron Middleton took it close to the 25, an 11-yard gain. It'll come back. Penalty against the Redskins. Let's listen. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men lined up on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, I don't, I don't think, Gary, there are two teams on the field at the same time in the National Football League that use the tight ends as much as these two teams. They clearly use them differently. Joe Gibbs uses his tight ends for blockers to block guys like Lawrence Taylor. And over the years, the Giants have used their uh, their tight ends both to run, to run but catch the ball over the middle on a first and 15 after the penalty Clark on the catch and the ball is stripped it's loose and the Giants have recovered Eric Howard comes up with it second turnover by Washington I don't think he can blame Gary Clark here. He's just trying to make something happen. Now he spins out to the right because he thinks that's where the open area is. Actually, if he had spun inside, he's got a play. But Mark Collins with a 24 to 7 lead is not going to let anything get by him. Either passed him on the long pass or threw him on the run. And check that. Gary Clark is not a happy man as his team down 24 to 7. 6.13 left to go in the game as Rodney Hampton on the first down brings it across the 40 to the 42. Pat, I was just thinking, last week the Steelers went into Arrowhead Stadium and shocked everybody, beating the Chiefs. And here come the Giants in the RFK. And likewise of the stunner here. Well, you know, it, it just, uh, I'm, still, I'm still really amazed that the Giants have lost four games. I mean, I think if they play like this, or if they can play like this the rest of the season, they have a chance of being a playoff team. There's just no doubt. I mean, yes, the Redskins are struggling, but certainly the Giants contributed to that struggle tonight. Washington using a timeout. They have two left. Well, Ray Hanley's team will meet the Packers next week, who defeated Detroit. Packers moving to three and five on the year. Well, Joe Gibbs said well, there's no way we should be 10 point favorites not looking at this series historically they'd lost six in a row before sweeping the series last year so Ray Hanley will get his first win as the Giants coach against the team from the nation's capital. in motion Rodney Hampton will bring it out to the 45 second down and three and he's about a yard short of the first down you know Gary you you, you know your offensive linemen are doing a pretty good job when you're running the ball when the other team knows you're going to and, and those two plays and those two plays that the Giants picked up what about nine yards and every Redskin knew they were going to run the football so that means guys like Right there, number 66, William Roberts and John Elliott Bardo, it's Eric Moore, Riesenberg. Those guys have done a fantastic job tonight. Third and a yard to go. Bunch, Hampton in the backfield. Hampton diving forward off the right-hand side. We'll have a McDonald's player of the game selected at the end of all of this as we have five minutes left to go. Well, you know, just as you think about this 1992 season too, Gary, it just underscores what we talked a little bit about last week. No dominant team in the National Football League. I mean, right now, clearly, you'd have to say Dallas is playing better football than anybody in the NFL. Perhaps before the 49ers lost today, you'd say that. 
but unlike last year when two teams were really clear-cut favorites with the, with the Redskins in the NFC and the Bills in the AFC we don't have that and I think it's going to make for a very exciting last half of the season scrimmage the 46 it was a first down by Hampton Hampton again he had 126 yards prior to that carry and he's across the 45 to the 44 another nine yards Brad Edwards made the stop there he's one of those backs Pat that we talk about when he gets up into 12 15 carries he just yeah. gets better and better stronger and stronger and Gary remember you mentioned it earlier and Ray Hanley said it that we match up well with the Redskins and, he's, and why? Because he said we can run the football and we can stop the run. And boy, they have done that tonight. 11 plays on this particular quarter and all of them have been on the ground by this Giants team. They're just grinding it out, as you mentioned. Hampton again to the 40. First and now, down. And now it's time to take Rodney Hampton out of the game, I think. 3.30 remaining in the ball game. You're up 24 to 7. Rodney Hampton's been a featured guy all night. You're going to need him the rest of this season. Give Lewis Tillman a chance, Otis Anderson, somebody, but, but take out Rodney Hampton. It's his second best output of the year. He's staying in there, and it will be a first down just short of the 40 yard line. There's Lewis Tillman. He'd like to get some playing time. He actually broke Walter Payton's record in college at Jackson State. They like him. They just can't find a place for him behind Hampton and Bunch. He plays both positions. Bunch being dragged down. That's Brantley, John Brantley, who played in the World League with Birmingham making the stop. And we're going to have a timeout call. Timeout, Washington. One timeout remaining for Washington. 2.44 left to be played. A real stunner here in the nation's capital. 24 to 7, New York. I want to tell you something. I don't think this hairstyle is going to catch the nation by storm. Do you? Yeah, here's a guy, the kind of guy that wonders why the Mona, Mona Lisa doesn't have eyebrows. So guys like that. You know, I wondered about that too. <laughs> Why do guys do that? Yep. Well, we saw some smiles during that breakout a while ago. The Giants, they haven't done a lot of smiling this year, but they are tonight. Bunch in the backfield, and Bunch spins his way to the 30-yard line, very close to the first down. Otis Anderson's in the game right now. The oldest running back in the NFL with 35 years of age. Six 1,000-yard years for this guy who's still the Cardinals' all-time leading rusher. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't look right when his, when his uniform's clean. <laughs> you, know, you, you really, you think about Anderson, O.J. Anderson, all the great runs he had. Never, never the 80-yard variety, yep. but, you know, the short yardage runs, the touchdown runs, the bad weather type of games that he played in, and he comes in with a clean uniform. Just doesn't seem right. He was the... MVP in the Super Bowl in 90 as we come to the two-minute warning. 24-7, New York. 67 yards earlier this year against the Cardinals. I'll tell you what, they'll give the offensive line some McNuggets because those guys deserved them. They, they cleared the way for Rodney Hampton. And there's our MVP and the Giants with a real surprise here. Redskins have won 17 of their last 18 games here at RFK, seven in a row. But that's going to come to a grinding halt as we have 152 left. They were going for the first down on a third and one. Yeah, maybe his maybe his last appearance here in RFK, LT. We called him an icon. I think it's fair. Yep. I mean, and those statistics don't tell the whole story. I think when he plays well, his teammates play well around him. Well, he'll be in Canton, Ohio. You know that. Future Hall of Famer. Ten straight years he made it to the Pro Bowl. But, you know, that smile, and we talked about the Giants smiling tonight. You, you just haven't seen that a lot this year. I saw Ray Hanley even smile a while ago. You I bet that almost... Uh, was the upset of a long time. No one expected this. 
LT, along with Rodney Hampton, will be on the Holiday Inn Stadium show with Bob Neal and company. How do you know that? Just, uh, I got a vision. There was See? a vision. It's the very first thing you've seen this year or envisioned. <laughs> Gary, it's been nice work with you. Yes, Welcome it has, aboard. Pat. It's been a good year. It has been. I've enjoyed it. Want to wish the ESPN guys uh, well the rest of the year, but uh, for our crew, it's been great. Sure has. The guys in the booth, Tom Delnos, our spotter, and Roger Riley, our statistician. Shannon Mizell, the coordinator. How about Johnny Fortune? Oh, Did he man. do a great job? Oof. He keeps telling me that. And Peter Lasser, our producer. And Lonnie Dale, our director. Thanks, guys. Ray Hanley. Evens up at four and four. Joe Gibbs skins go to five and three after winning three straight. Here from RFK Stadium. The New York Giants 24, the Washington Redskins 7. Holiday Inn Stadium show coming up. We'll be back with some final thoughts in just a moment.